Even Photoshop tools like HSL only offer limited options for where and how you can adjust the color in your image. So Lumenzia version 11.5 now offers custom color masks to let you target pixels based on their hue, saturation, and luminosity, and then adjust those colorful pixels with any tool you like. Before we dive into a real photograph, let's first consider this test image. What I've created here is every hue on the color wheel, and then within each hue, we've got a range of saturation and luminosity ranging from a very bright and relatively desaturated value down to a highly saturated value, out to a dark value of the same hue, on out to black. So we've got a good smattering of real colors because real color is not just hue, it's also gonna be the saturation and the luminosity. So with that, let's go grab a hue saturation adjustment because that's what most people would use to go work with color. And let's say that our image had some kind of magenta wildflowers and we wanna make them brighter in our photograph. So naturally with HSL, the adjustment for brightness is lightness. And as we bring that up, notice that it's going to desaturate our image. Let's reset that and just work with the magentas and see how far we can push things. So I'm gonna click for the targeted adjustment tool, click on the magentas. It's now sampled those magentas and now I can play with the lightness in just that range. And it's done a nice job of picking the specific hue here. Although note that we have no control over whether we're gonna get a desaturated or a saturated magenta or whether we're gonna be working with a dark magenta or a light magenta, we just get anything with a magenta hue regardless of the saturation and luminosity. So we have a bit of limitation over how we can target these pixels, but in many cases, that's gonna work fine. The bigger challenge we have is that the controls we can apply here are pretty limiting. Notice that the lightness is desaturating our magentas, so we can try and push up the lightness and then offset it by pushing up the saturation. But as we do that, if we look from before to after, it is brighter, but I've lost some saturation and I've got a little bit of a weird edge effect here. So maybe I'm gonna push up the saturation a little bit higher, maybe push down my lightness a little bit, try and find some kind of balance here, and maybe that's gonna work for me. So eventually I can probably get to a good compromise, but it's not ideal, and it's definitely a lot of work to play with these two different sliders. And the challenge here is that we're working with lightness and not brightness. So to get at that, instead we wanna go use a different tool in Photoshop. Let's go hide this layer, and instead reach for a brightness contrast layer, and brightness is a different color model where as you increase it, you keep the saturation. So we can get to a brighter magenta without losing that saturation. That's a much better adjustment for us. But the problem, of course, is that this tool doesn't have any ability to target the magenta pixels. It goes to all the pixels. And so it might be a lot more difficult to apply this to just the flowers and not the stuff around the flowers. So this is kind of fundamentally the issue you're going to see with a lot of color adjustments is that you have some limited ability in some tools to pick the hue, but then you can't apply it to any adjustment you want. If we wanna to go to any of the other adjustments in Photoshop, they don't necessarily have this, and other tools like third-party filters probably won't have color targeting built in. So that's the reason why Lumenzia version 11.5 has a new ability to target colors within the image and will include the ability to target the saturation and luminosity. Let's get rid of these layers and take a look at it. So coming back to that same example of the magentas, if we want to target magenta, we'd go in Lumenzia and click on the magenta swatch, and it's going to create a preview of a luminosity mask for us. So right now it's created these orange layers that are showing us where magenta is in the image. And just like the HSL tool, it's kind of all those magenta values, but we can now sub-select if we want to a little bit further. So I could go click on L for lighter values of magenta. I can bring down the slider to get to something like lights four. So really bright magentas or maybe I want to go for the darker magentas and go to like darks two or darks three. I can start to hone this in. I can click this again and just go back to all the magentas and something like this. Or I could go and click on saturation for the more saturated versions of magenta or vibrance for the least saturated versions. And I can combine all these things together. So I could, for example, maybe I want to target this band of yellows here. So for that, let's go use the color picker get the exact hue right here. And so now we'll have that value and its neighboring values. We can tighten this up a bit. So we've got this ability to adjust the range that's targeted. So let's go bring in some of these greens and oranges, make that a little bit tighter, really dial that in. And to hit this band here, I might wanna go for some midtones and an A through E are midtone zones. So A is gonna be the darkest value of something. B is a bit brighter. C is brighter than that, so on up the chain here. 
So zone B is getting pretty close. And I can again grab the precision slider and make it a little bit tighter to really hit that band, something around here. And I can go adjust my levels to really dial that in. So if I want to target a specific shade of yellows, and let's just go and bring back our preview here in opacity to something like 80% so we can see it, we can hit these. Maybe I want to hit this value of yellow. So I'm going to go for a little bit brighter and bring it on in. I can hit the exact saturation and luminosity and hue that I want for any given color. And I can keep refining this you know, as much as I want. If I want to go and hit more of these greens and blues, I can go bring out my slider, bring that over here. I can grab in the middle and move multiple sliders at once, kind of move things around to wherever I might need them to be in the image. So that's the general idea with what you can preview with Lumenzia. And then once you've got the preview you want to go and apply it to something, we would go click on one of these orange buttons to apply it. So let's go take a look at that example of the magenta again. Let's go clear this out with X. I'll go click on the magentas. And I should also note that within the tool, if you hold down shift or control, you'll have the ability to go for a wider or narrower version. So if I command click, I get a narrow range and shift click, I get a much wider range. And you know, again, you can still customize things as you like, but I'm just gonna go with the default magentas here. I think that'll work just fine. And then within this, let's go create a brightness contrast layer. So now we have a brightness contrast layer with a mask targeting all the magentas. And now when we go move our brightness, you can see that we're able to bump up that brightness without losing the saturation in that value. So it gives us a lot more control over that adjustment. And again, you can apply that color targeting to any adjustment you want, not just the ones that have color targeting built in. So let's now go take a look at a real image. So in this case, I've got this monk in orange robes with a relatively orange bag in front of a yellow wall. There's not a whole lot of color separation here. And there's you know, gonna be some challenges picking these apart. But what I'd like to do is better separate the monk from the background, make it a little bit more dimensional and a little bit more focus being put towards my subject as opposed to this very bright, somewhat distracting background wall here. So for that, let's go and try and sample our yellows and see where that gets us. That's a pretty good starting point, but of course it's picked up some of the umbrella, it's picked up some of the bag, and I'd like to exclude those. So let's go refine our color range. I'm gonna go make sure I've got all the yellows. There's no greens I need to worry about. And this bag in the umbrella, if we look at the underlying image, are a little bit more on the orange spectrum. So let's go bring in this orange slider, maybe a little bit more. And you can see we've very nicely isolated our subject. And if I bring this a little bit to the left, let's see if we get a little bit better targeting the wall. Something right around there seems pretty good. And now I wanna make sure this is fully selected. So I'm gonna to go to my levels layer, bring in the white slider, and we've got a very nice selection of the background. I wanna remove this part of the bag here because I don't wanna be adjusting this as well. We can see there that there's some kind of insignia on it that is coming through. So let's go and refine this just a little bit, maybe move this a little bit to the right. And I wanna paint this out. So in my adjustment layers, I've got this paint layer where you can just paint black on. So I'm gonna hit B for my brush, switch it down to a smaller version of black, and I can just go and paint with black directly on my preview. So I'm just refining this preview and can remove it. It's non-destructive, so I can always erase it if I paint over an edge, but just a quick and easy adjustment. And this is not something you'll see by default if you wanna see the paint layer or the dodge burn layer. In the top right flyout menu of the panel, you can paint on orange layers or you can dodge and burn on them. Dodge and burn means you would take an existing gray and make it brighter or darker, whereas paint just literally lets you paint any value completely out or in as you need. So I think this is a great preview of that surrounding yellow. Let's go ahead and load that up. And in this case, what I wanna do is do it on a vibrance saturation layer, because we saw before that there's some problems with working with saturation sometimes, and I think vibrance does a better job. So I'm creating a vibrance layer, and it has a just a default mask from Photoshop. I wanna apply this preview to my vibrance layer, and I can apply it as a mask by clicking the mask button in Lumencia. So now that preview has been applied. If I alt or option click it, you can see it's exactly what we had previewed just a moment ago. So that's controlling the targeting of this vibrance. So now within my vibrance layer, I can go bring down the vibrance in the background to kind of soften things up. I can play with the saturation, find a value that gives me nice separation there. Notice that I'm not changing the saturation of the monk in any way. 
I'm just taking down that background and creating a little nicer separation. I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit. I wanna keep some of that color, I do like it. Just wanna have less than I had before. And the next thing I'm thinking about is to maybe cool this down a bit. And if we were in an HSL adjustment layer, if I just go show one for a second here, I'm sorry, an HSL adjustment layer, there's really no direct way to you know, add coolness to a color. So what I really want instead is gonna be a color balance layer targeting the same pixels on this mask. So I'm just gonna go and create a new color balance layer. And to use the same mask, I can either group these or I can clip them. So I'm gonna option click, if I hold ultra option right in the middle here, I clip this to this layer. So this layer now uses the same mask and anything I do on this layer is gonna flow through the same mask. So let's go cool it down by adding a little bit of blue and a little bit of cyan like so. It's a subtle adjustment, but it's creating a little bit more color separation between the subject and background that helps that person stand out. And now I wanna darken this down a little bit. So I'm gonna go create a brightness contrast layer. And again, I want to hold alter option, clip it, so it's only affecting my background. And let's bring down our brightness to something like minus 20, maybe kick up our contrast a little bit, like so, and let's see how that looks. And I think that's doing a nice job of helping to separate our subject. And we can just see overall from before to after how nicely that kind of cuts our subject out of the background there. And the last thing I'm thinking here is that this ground is pretty dirty, it's pretty distracting. I wouldn't mind softening that up a bit. So for that, I probably wanna just kind of fuzz it out with Adobe Camera Raw and I'm just gonna reuse my same mask again there. So for this, let's go and convert our background to a smart object. And then we'll go up to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And in here, let's just take down our clarity, like 30, 35 points, take down our texture, about a similar amount. And we can see from before to after how it's gonna soften that ground. We're losing detail in the monk that we don't wanna lose. So we'll have to use a mask to control that, but it's bringing away some of that detail more than I need, but the mask is gonna kind of offset some of that. So we'll say, okay. And here we can see we've now got that filter. And what I wanna do is transfer this mask onto this layer. And there's no direct way to do that. If I option click and drag a mask, I can duplicate it, but it's a layer mask, not a filter mask. So let's undo that. I need to transfer this over as a filter mask. And an easy way to do that is command click on the mask to load it as a selection. And then on the other layer, we just click on mask in Lumenzia, which will then notice that it has a filter and we can add it as a filter mask. So I'll say, yep, filter mask. I don't want to feather, I want to use it as it is. And so now it's my filter mask. And so it's no longer affecting the monk directly. If we look at this mask by turning it off and on, you can see how it's isolating things much better here. And if we just turn the filter off and on, you can see how that's affecting the ground there. And it is affecting the background around the monk a little bit. So I'm gonna make a revision and just take some of this wall out by clicking on my mask, hitting G for my gradient tool. I've got a black to transparent gradient and just click and drag down like so. And see how that knocks off the top of the mask so it looks more like this. And so now my adjustment is more like this. So it's just taking some of that excess detail out of this dirty ground and minimizing that for, I think, a better result. And let's just compare from our starting point. Originally here, we've got minimal separation from the color. It just kind of mixes a bit more. The background's very bright, it's very distracting. Our eyes aren't immediately going to the subject versus after where we've got much nicer balance and focus on our subject. Now to learn more about Lumenzia, click on this next video.